Years ago, motorcycle carburetors were readily accessible, especially on dirt bikes. Today's modern motorcycle carburetor is difficult to access. This carburetor is virtually new, but does need some float work. So we'll work on the carburetor in the frame. You may be wondering, how did I get the float bowl off the carburetor when there's no room beneath the carburetor for a regular length screwdriver? I often make tools for niche work like this. This tool began with a conventional screwdriver and a steel sleeve. I braced these two parts together, finished it, and now I have this screwdriver for removing the three screws that hold the float bowl in place. It's the exact length of the bowl depth and gets the job done. While well, there's some debris in the drain plug, the jets are actually clean. This float can be worked on without the need to remove the carburetor and clean the unit. Removing the needle and float can be done in the frame. The needle has a spring plunger. The normal way to adjust a needle and float with a spring type plunger is to invert the carburetor or have the carburetor on a 45 degree tilt upside down. The idea is to close the gap and place slight weight on the spring plunger. For this carburetor, we're simply changing the needle and verifying the float height to make sure it's correct. Float height is checked by gently lifting up the float. Float drop is checked as well. The float drop has been changed here to a drop of 19 millimeter instead of 24 millimeters. Float height is set by holding the float up just enough to take the slack out of the plunger, simulating what it would be like to invert the carburetor and set it on a 45 degree angle to weight the float needle. The spring-loaded plunger is still extended. It's just the slack removed. On this carburetor, the needle seats at 14.5 millimeters and the float drop is 19 millimeters. This is a traditional float height and float drop setting done with a gauge, in this case in the frame. The accuracy of this method would be much more certain if the needle did not have a spring-loaded plunger and if the carburetor was inverted and placed on a 45 degree slope for setting the float. It's the factory method for setting the float height and drop. Now I will share another method for adjusting float height that is highly accurate and traditionally was used on many motorcycle carburetors. This is a time-honored method for checking the fuel level in the float bowl. The clear tube method connects a hose to the tube on the bottom of the float bowl and runs the tube up the side of the carburetor and when the drain screw is loosened, fuel will flow up into the tube to the exact level of the fuel in the bowl. This is the height of the spillover tube. If the floats are set so high that fuel can spill over the top of this, and that's just over the split line between the body and the float bowl, then the float is obviously way too high. So we want the fuel to be below that level. And the rule of thumb is about three millimeters, sometimes as much as four below the rim or mating surface between the float bowl and the carburetor main body. When reading a clear tube fuel level, the bike must be leveled. The split line between the carburetor main body and the float bowl should be on level. This is a clear hose method for checking the fuel in the float bowl. Without removing the bowl or adjusting the float in any way, we could see exactly what the fuel level is in the float bowl. So let's start by loosening the drain screw. Notice how the fuel flows up into the tube. At this point, it's right behind that strap, so we'll turn on the fuel at the fuel petcock and see how much the fuel rises in the tube as fuel flows from the petcock past the needle and seat and raises the float. We'll turn on the petcock. And with a full tank of fuel, that should raise the fuel in the tube. We've got a problem here. Fuel is overflowing the tube. And that shows us that the needle and seat are wide open. Turning the petcock off stops that flow of fuel. But we definitely have a problem with the needle and seat. This leak out the tube shows us that the needle is not seating. Either the float is rising and the needle is not seating, or the float is not rising, meaning that the float is actually sinking 
in the bowl. In either case, we need to drop the bowl and see why the needle isn't seating. We're trying to seat the needle. We're tapping gently on the float bowl. We'll turn the peacock on again and see if the fuel flow has stopped. The fuel flow did not stop. The fuel is leaking still. The needle is not seating. Or the float has sunk. So we'll remove the float now, and what I want to do is check the float for buoyancy to make sure that it does float properly, and readjust the float. And once again, check it by the method I just illustrated, to be certain that when the float is rising, it will shut the needle and seat at the proper float level in the bowl. I'm weighing the float right out of the bowl while it's still wet. And the reason why I'm doing this, I'm going to check the buoyancy, but I also want to know what the float weighs because after setting and drying out completely, I want to make sure that the float isn't much lighter than it is right now. If it is much lighter, then the float is absorbing gasoline and is likely to sink. We'll check it also for buoyancy. As it stands now, the float weighs approximately one half ounce. We're also going to look at the needle seat. We want to look at the needle seat and make sure that it has a polished surface, that there are no irregularities or varnish around the seat. If there's varnish around the seat, the needle will not seat. So we're looking straight up the seat and it looks like it has a nice sheen to it with no sign of varnish. The floats are maintaining their weight and there's no indication that they are absorbing gasoline which would cause the floats to sink. The problem looks like it's related strictly to the float height at this point, but we will check the floats for buoyancy. This is a simple buoyancy test. We're not concerned about the floats just floating. Put a little pressure on them. Make sure that they float to the surface with some resistance and some pressure. Okay, we're going to set the float this way. Instead of just with a gauge, we've used the gauge. We're going to close the float needle and turn on the peccock. We have some pressure against the needle now from the fuel. We're going to lower the float till gas flows. And then we're going to close the float to just where the gas seals well. And as you can see, the float is now right at that point and slightly tensioned. It's parallel with the body line. Watch again. There's a flow of fuel. There's a needle going into the seat. And right Here, it seats completely with tension on the seat. That's where we want it. We'll check it with a clear tube to verify that it's right, but that should do it. The measurement for the float drop is 19 millimeters. That's off the edge of the float to the body split line, and the float height or maximum float height is 14 and a half, normally checked with a carburetor upside down and down 45 degree tilt to just get the float to weight the needle seat. This is a new bowl gasket. Don't take chances on that. It's a simple item, inexpensive ultimately. You don't want that gasket to fail in service. It should stand up above the height of the bowl when it's in good condition. It'll be compressed when both pieces mate together. The goal at this point is to raise the float bowl into position without the gasket. Make sure it's completely flush with the body of the carburetor and turn the peccock on to see where we stand with the float height. We're going to check the float level before we put the screws into the bottom of the carburetor. I'm going to turn the peccock on and observe what the float level is. Watch the clear tube as fuel flows into the bowl. We're going to open up the bowl drain and see exactly where we stand. See the fuel level in the clear tube as well as in the bowl.
and we're spot on. The new gasket is now in place. Some would find it easier to remove the carburetor for this work. Considering the amount of effort to get access to the carburetor, this is still our best approach on this application. In this case, this is the most expedient way to do this job. The carburetor is virtually new. The motorcycle was in storage for a very long time. The carburetor needed a new needle and float work. Two hands and this special screwdriver get the job done. After securing this series of three screws, I will go around a final time to be certain that the screws are tight enough. Phillips head screws like this need to be tightened carefully. The screwdriver is held in place straight up and not allowed to twist out the head of the screws, which is common with Phillips head screws. Torque setting for these screws is two newton meters. I can't get in there with a torque wrench. Two newton meters is secure and not overly tight. These threads can strip readily. Two newton meters is 16.8 inch pounds. Make sure the screws are secured snugly, tight enough to stay in place under heavy vibration. So let's test that again. We'll drop the fuel out of the tube. The drain screw is shut off at this point. The petcock is off. We'll feed the tube back up here as if we we're doing this test without having removed the bowl. This is what you can do to check the float level without removing the bowl. And given the poor access in this case to the carburetor, it's probably a really good idea to check the float level this way and save yourself the hassle of removing the bowl. In some applications, and actually it's recommended in the shop manual for this particular application, there would be a need to remove the carburetor to access the bowl. But we don't need to do that in this case. So let's go ahead and run the test again. We'll turn the petcock on and we'll open the needle. Watch the fuel flow through the tube. It will rise to the level of the fuel inside the bowl. There's an air bubble and we'll let that go up. Squeezing that air bubble out. And again, taking the meniscus into account, curvature of the fuel inside the tube. And so our actual float level looks good. We certainly don't want it too high, it will spill over. We want to make sure there's an adequate supply of fuel inside the bowl. Too little fuel in the bowl and the engine will run lean. Too much fuel, it will run rich. And way too much fuel, it will flood over. We're three to four millimeters below the split between the carburetor body and the float bowl. And this is ideal. Remember the tube that's coming up in the float bowl is about right here, about a millimeter above the split in the body. We have an adequate amount of space between the top of the spillover tube and this point. And that should work out well. To provide some perspective, I'm rocking the bike. And notice that the fuel is obviously moving in the tube. Off pavement, the movement of the bike would be considerably greater than this. The fuel level is four millimeters below the split line. And the spillover tube is at least a millimeter above that point. So you're actually about, the fuel itself is probably five millimeters below the top of the spillover tube. And again, approximately th four millimeters below the split in the body of the carburetor and fuel level in the bowl. It's a good margin there to keep from flooding or spilling over the tube. On a bike that's run in the dirt, that's probably a really good idea to run it, and we are between three and four millimeters, and that's probably where this sets in. Three to four millimeters below the split between the bowl and the body, approximately five millimeters below the spillover tube. The meniscus in this case is concave, so when trying to understand the fuel level in the tube, look to the concave base for that measurement. Do not measure from the higher level where the meniscus effect has the fuel further up the tube. 
measure to the low point in the curved concave radius. Needle, seat, and fuel settled. The fuel level is uh, approximately four millimeters below the split between the main body and the float bowl, and that's ideal. Off pavement, there's a lot of movement of fuel and a lot of pressure from the tank. The drain screw tightened. It's time to hook up the hose for the drain, and we're good to go. We'll test this in the field. The clear tube method is the quickest and most accurate way to check the fuel level in the float bowl to know the float height without having to remove the bowl. This is a quick troubleshooting procedure that can be used in race pits, at your campsite, or at your shop.